It's true, absolutely true, that mankind has an effect on the climate. Uh, but then so do aardvarks. I mean, every species has an effect on the climate. There's no question about this. We, every species makes up what nature is. We're part of nature. We're not somehow separate from it. There is no part over here that that's nature and this is us. It's all one big organic hole, if you like. There's a good buzz phrase for you, organic. Okay. So the reason we know we're not having a large effect, we know we're having some, is because the models that they use to make predictions are based on their theory. And those projections that they have made for the past two decades are not just bad, but lousy. They're terrible. And it used to be a fundamental precept of science that when you have a model that makes such lousy predictions, you knew the theory that underlie it was wrong. And so why aren't scientists acknowledging this? Why aren't they? They know exactly what I know, these scientists, but they're not saying anything, and why? Because they don't want to be attacked. They don't want to face the same kind of uh, nonsense that we have to face. We have some senators wanting to prosecute us under the RICO Act. For what? I get not a penny from anybody, no oil company, nothing like this. I'm an independent scientist. I don't do this. I do this out of my own dime. And uh, if anything, it costs me money because I've been, you know, I've been denied jobs, I've been called a denier, no one wants to work with people like me. It's nonsense. But the scientists know what I know. And if all they, they all spoke out, even if just a fraction of them spoke out, had the guts to say what they, uh, the real science that they know, this stuff would end, and shortly. It's the education system as a whole. We're not taught to, to think about answers. You're talk about, they want to talk instead about how you feel about certain subjects. Give me your reaction to that. Don't tell me how you think. Don't tell me how you reason to get to this. Tell me how you feel. They're trying to inculcate the right feelings. And that's the problem. Instead of facts, we have feelings. The need to believe. I mean, uh, so the level of belief about global warming just depends on who you're talking to. There is a set of sort of environmentalist true believers. And these people need to believe in the solution to global warming. To them, it's sort of axiomatic that mankind is a pest, uh, a cancer on the planet, some of them say. And these people don't really care so much about global warming, I think, just as they didn't care so much about global cooling in the 70s. But what they do care about is people. They think there's too many people. They don't like what people are doing. And they think that uh, people use up too many resources, when in fact it's the opposite. It's the other way around. The, the, the world population uh, was growing up until about 1900 at a fairly slow pace. And then it really took off. It really took, are we done? Oh, sorry. And it really took off after that because of improvements in technology and agriculture primarily and in shipping food and getting food to more people because of the internal combustion engine. Once the internal combustion engine, once fossil fuels be able, were, were able to be utilized, all of a sudden more people had more food. And this led to an increased population because people weren't dying so young anymore. And that's what's really the cause right now still of an increasing population. People are not dying at the same rates. The infant population is uh, dramatically lower. The, the, the mortality rate, I should say, has really dramatically lowered. And the... Okay. Sorry. No, no. And the... And the uh, and of course people are living longer because of medical technologies, all because of our use of fossil fuels and other things to, to forward these things. So the environmentalists have it backwards. Uh, right now there's lots of people say in Africa who are having a lot of kids, but th they're having a lot of kids because they're still working out in the fields. These people are farming, they're herders and things like this. They need to have the, the human muscle that goes along with this. If we took that away from them by sort of enforced policies, of uh, limited numbers of children and so forth, we'd be plunging them back into poverty. If we really cared about uh, people's, if we really cared about poor people, we would be trying to make sure that they were de as developed as we were. And so uh, this is the, the, the true believers in environment. They think there's just too many people. What leads to more population is uh, having less. You when you have raising, less, you have more children. You don't think raising the standard of living uh, actually decreases population? It does. Okay. It does, demonstrably. Yeah. That's what I mean. So you have less, you have, if you have fewer things available to you, you have more kids so you can ensure your own posterity. Culture as a whole 
is uh, sort of anti-human for some reason. I mean, abortion kills more than... Um, I think that there was a survey that came out last week in Britain. 25, 26 percent of the deaths uh, in Britain per annum are attributed to abortion. So if you really, if you want your population numbers to come back up, you would stop killing off uh, the lives that are inside the mothers. That's one big way. Another thing you could do is to discourage contraception. It's funny, though, because it's the people who are doing well, our society in particular, who say, I mean, we're doing better than America. We must admit it. I mean, we're doing better than the rest of the planet uh, on average. There's no question about it. But it's we who say, uh, when we get married young and so forth, we can't afford children. Well, it's the very poor people who somehow can afford plenty of them. So we have our priorities backwards uh, somehow, and that needs to be, that's nothing a government can do. I mean, this is a, this is a cultural thing. This is a religious, this is a philosophical, spiritual thing. The people who are articulating a policy of global warming, many of them believe their story. And so they're attempting to mitigate, theoretically, what they say, uh, global warming by aerosol spraying. What do you think of that phenomenon? That, that's what they tried in the 70s. <laughs> but the initial population explosion was going to lead to uh, more people, and that was going to lead to more pollution, and that pollution was going to direct the sun's rays back out into space, and that was going to plunge us into this other ice age. Mm. It didn't work. Uh, because those, because they overestimate the effect. It has local effects. There's no question about this. This is undeniable. You go to China, for instance, in the Beijing and the developed areas mm -hmm. of Beijing, and some days the pollution is very thick indeed, and that changes the local climate.